Hello, and thank you for joining us with a conversation with artist Peter Mudd. Hello, Peter. Hello. Thank Happy you. Here. Really great to see you. Thank you for the strong background. Your mm. study looks very beautiful. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what you're exhibiting in the group show. Tell us about your work. You mean the piece that's on there? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's the latest version of a series of dragons that I've been doing over the last two or three years. And uh, like many others that I've done, it came about accidentally, um, just cutting out pieces of wood for something to do. Um, and it obviously when it was done, it was a dragon. And uh, the first couple of ones I did, I were hand painted. Um, but now I've moved more into a, a use of reclaimed wood and you know different designs and so on. And I've uh, sort of changed the shape a tiny bit over the years. Um, but when I finished it, uh, it was obvious to me actually what it was. Um, the name of the piece is Eco Karma. And it's really a picture or an image or an icon or whatever of uh, our payback from mother nature for wrecking <laughs> the planet. And uh, so that was, that's where it comes from. And it's each, uh, each of the dragons of the last three anyway, the last four are mounted on croquet balls that are worn and chipped and whatever. And they, some are green and some are blue and they're perfect images for an abused earth. So that's what the piece is. Beautiful, how big is it? It's not that big, it's probably, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think, it's probably about maybe 17, 18 inches tall. Okay. Um, you know. Nice. Foot wide maybe, at the most. Uh, and because I remember the very first time I was introduced to your work and we had it at the Evanston Made group show, it was... Oh, it was gigantic. That was... It was gigantic and it was the size rules. That was the seven foot uh, violation, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't always work that huge. You sometimes no. work small. Okay. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And tell us what you're working on right now and where are you working? Where's your studio? In the basement. Okay. Most of the work I do with wood, which is what I'm working on now, I have, you know, a number of, of machines. I have scroll saw, uh, a, a spindle sander, all sorts of sanders and, and whatnot. So it's down in the dungeon and uh, that's where I work most of the time. And you're currently creating or are you taking a pause? No, no. I'm, uh, you know, like I said before, when I get a little restless or bored or I don't have anything underway, I'll go downstairs and just take a piece of wood and put it on the scroll saw and move it around and whatever comes out of that comes out of it. And uh, that's currently what I'm working on. It's a, it's a little bigger piece. It's probably, I don't know, maybe two feet by two feet. Um, it's all cut out in different forms and shapes. And then I use like a, you know what marquetry is? Marquetry? Yeah, it's M-A-R-Q-U-E-T-R-Y. It's when usually it's done with very thin veneer. Mm -hmm. People will cut out shapes and put them together. It's almost like a mosaic with with veneer. You see it on tabletop. Yeah, on tabletops you see it. I was gonna say like mm -hmm. that. Well, this is a, sort of a, a distant cousin of that. I'll cut out a form and then fit them all together on the on the same piece. Excellent. So it's all different textures, depths of wood, colors. You know, you could see on the on the piece in the show, it's a little bit, that's a little bit more finished um, than rough, but there's lots of uh, different kinds of wood on there. It's almost all reclaimed wood. Yeah, and for are you searching for wood in canals? Are you buying it like at oh, Evanston I, Rebuilders? Where do you get it? I get it on the street, in alleys. Everywhere. Uh, everywhere it's it's yeah. it's everywhere so yeah <laughs> my basement my basement looks like a sort of a crazy person's lumberyard excellent that's great um 
let's talk a little bit about your journey to making and how it has been a part of your life and for how long? Almost as long as I can remember. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, like many kids, I was into coloring books. I loved them and uh, had a, uh, finally at one point got the 64 color box of Crayolas with the sharpener on the back. And, so fancy. Yeah, so <laughs> I was in heaven then and I loved to color, but I loved to color in unusual choices. So somebody could be blue or mm -hmm. uh, you know, any kind of sort of expression of just what I felt like. Um, so that was, that was where it sort of began with me. And uh, you may remember, you may not be old enough to remember color forms. Um, it was a, a Hasbro toy, supposedly like an art game, I guess, of some sort. And all it was was a, a black, you know, rectangle, probably 15 by 12, something like that. And it was like a smooth, slick surface, and you'd have these little vinyl cut out shapes that were oh, yes. triangles or circles or lines or whatever. And you could put them on the black mm -hmm. surface and they'd adhere. And then you could do whatever you wanted with them. And then you could peel them off and start all over again. So yep. it's kind of, uh, you, you know what they are? Yeah, you, now you know what, visually yeah. I can pull them in front yeah. of my mind, yeah. yeah. So it was that kind of thing. Just I, I would, you know, just do it for hours and hours and hours. And then so from as long as you can remember, you yeah, have been oh yeah, making. Absolutely, yeah. yeah and I, you've I, always had a studio in your basement? Or have you had studios here, everywhere? Here, when I, you know, I lived, grew up in New York um, and moved out here in 1970 and moved into this house in 93. So depending on where I was, uh, uh, I had a, either a little space in an apartment or you know, something like that. Nice. And the wood making for you is, um, is it the physical aspect of building? Is it how wood expresses itself? What is it that you are attracted to in, in terms of woodworking? Oh, all of those things. Um, I, I just love wood and the surfaces, and especially when it's worn. Mm -hmm. Find something with nail holes in it, I'm even happier. Um, so something that's weathered and, and worn, I don't mind. I build some things out of new wood, but that's mostly furniture. Mm -hmm. My artwork, it's almost all uh, reclaimed wood. So it's, it's, the, it's the texture, uh, it's the color of the, you know, the weathering or, or the paint or whatever it might be and uh, how they fit together and making, a, you know, making a, an interesting, design, I guess would be the word. Nice. You know, and mounting it on another thing. So it's almost like uh, I usually start with uh, a cutout of something like uh, three quarter inch plywood or, or pine or something like that. And then the other pieces are glued on it almost like scales. Mm -hmm. so, so there's a basic shape that I cut out and start with, but then how I, how I cover it is you know where a lot of choice and decisions and whatnot come in. Excellent. Who? Um, last question. Who are you inspired by? Is there um, either sculptors, two D? What is it that informs a lot of the work that you do? Um, well, I mean, I, I think that there's a, a maybe a, a stretch comparison between some of what I do and some of what uh, Louise Nevelson did. Um, Brancusi is a is a mm. big influence. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen his studio in Paris. It's a spectacular thing to see. Um, Kandinsky is my inspiring mm. painter. Um, but there's you know there's hundreds of people and things. Uh, Van Gogh was an early inspiration to me. The Starry Night uh, mm -hmm. sort of knocked my socks off and I think in fourth grade when we had, <laughs> we had picture studies. I don't know if you ever heard of that. 
picture study, like an early form of art history where they would just do the slides. Yeah. Oh, it was a literal piece of paper that was, you know, printed with the reproduction on it. And, and then the nun who was the teacher in the class would hold forth about it a little bit. Wow. <laughs> that kind of thing. So it was a starry night and the persistence of memory, the Dolly painting with the nice. melting watches that it was like, a, I want to make stuff like that. That's, that's yeah. sort of my fourth grade uh, mindset about it, but I just loved it. So. And I love, I love that you have such early memories. These conversations with artists, when I ask that question, it always goes to like, I was four and yeah. I knew. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today and for being part of the show again, even though it's virtual. I totally appreciate it. Yeah, great. My pleasure.